Hi, my name is Valerie and the experiment we're going to be doing today is called Ecosystem in a Bottle. And the reason Ecosystem in a Bottle is so cool is because it's a miniature greenhouse. And here at Monsanto we have lots of greenhouses. And the reason greenhouses are cool is because you can control that environment. So you can add different types of soil, more plants, uh, less plants, different types of water, maybe a pinch of salt, and see how that changes that ecosystem or that environment. All right, so let's get started. The materials that you'll need to do ecosystem in a bottle are a pair of scissors, a marker to write with, the seeds that you want to plant within your ecosystem, bottle caps, we're recycling our two liter bottles for this, some water, some soil, and some wicks. These wicks can be found in the craft section um, where all the candles are uh, at, at a craft store. Uh, then you'll need a ruler, a drill, some safety glasses, and some vice grips to hold your bottle cap. So scientists are always safe. Uh, we always want to practice safety. In this experiment, we'll be using some equipment that you'll definitely want some adult supervision. So make sure you don't try this until you have them there with you helping. All right, for the first step of the experiment, we're gonna grab our two liter bottles. Now, this part can be kind of tricky, so you might have to hold up your bottle like this. The bottle is gonna kind of curve right here, and you wanna make sure that if you put your thumb or about two centimeters right before that curve, that's where you're gonna draw your line and that's where you're gonna cut. So right about there, we'll do a little dot. And we know that's where we need to cut on this one. And if it's helpful, you can just draw a line so you know where to go. As for your other bottle, you'll want to hold it up and it's about a thumb and a half from the bottom. So you do a little mark. If you cut it up too high, then it's difficult for the bottles to fit together. So make sure you measure from the bottom up. And that's about two and a half centimeters. All right, so before we get started cutting, um, we want to be sure that we're safe at all times. So you may want to ask your, the adult in the room to help you get the cut started and then you can finish it. So the way we would want to start this is lightly pinch up where um, your line is and get that, that cut started. All right, there's the first part. As for the second bottle, um, when you go to cut, this plastic down here at the bottom is really thick, and so it's better to use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade to get that started. For this step, you definitely want an adult to help you. Make sure we close it up. All right, press down a bit and then we start cutting again. This piece right here we won't need, but you could actually make a little something else out of it. If you put some sugar water in there, um, you could put it outside and attract some pollinators. All right, this is gonna be your cap to the top of your ecosystem. And this is gonna be where we put our bottle cap, our wick to get that water to pull up from the bottom, our soil, and then whatever seeds we end up putting in there. All right, for this step, to make sure that we're really safe scientists, we wanna make sure that our adult helper is there to do this step. So first, we wanna protect our eyes, so we'll put our safety glasses on. Notice that I'm not wearing any, um, any dangle, anything that's dangling that will get caught up in the drill. My hair is pulled back, so that'll be away from the drill. I have my vice grips here, which are actually gonna hold the cap not my fingers. We have a cutting board here. Reverse a little bit. There we go. And we have our hole. All right, now for the next step. We're gonna be taking the two liter bottle that's a bit larger and has the, the, the top part here. Our cap. Since our wicks are a little bit small, we're gonna have seedlings on either side of the bottle. We're gonna put two in. It's easier to put your wicks into the cap first. So we put them in, thread them through. All right, take your wicks, put them in the top of the bottle, and then screw on the cap. 
All right, the next step in our experiment is we want to fill this um, two liter bottle up with water. Now this part can be a little bit tricky, you might have to do a little trial and error, but essentially we want that water to be pretty close to the cap but not fully submerged and we don't want really, um, uh, we don't want a lot of our wick exposed. So we're just going to kind of go through a trial and error process here. Some water in, we'll try it. Looks pretty close to me. Set this down in here. Separate our wicks out so that they're not both distributed on one side of the um, two liter bottle. Then we're gonna add some soil. Science can be messy sometimes, so it's okay if you get soil all over the place. Now some of the other things you can do if you want to make multiple um, ecosystems in a bottle is you can put some rocks here before you put the, the soil on there. And farmers do this, it's called tiling, and that's to help with drainage. Um, so you can kind of decide, you know, do I, want, um, do I want to put rocks in here? What type of rocks do you want to put in here? Um, what kind of soil do you want to put in here? And that also will depend on um, what, your, what seeds you'll be growing. In this case, we're going to be growing a nice little herb window garden. So we chose seeds like thyme, oregano, basil, and mint. So depending on what types of seeds you choose to plant um, will depend on the depth in which you have to plant them. For these herbs that we want to plant, it's very, very shallow. So we're just going to kind of put a little bit of soil on top of them. So we have mint here. Take a pinch. Place that almost to the surface with a little soil on top. Then we have some thyme. Now, as you start to put your seeds in your um, ecosystem, you're definitely going to want to keep uh, some pretty good notes in your journal. So if you draw a circle in your journal and then kind of act like as if you were looking at your ecosystem from an aerial view, you'll want to map out where you're planting these seeds. That way, when they start to germinate and start to grow, you can keep track of what was growing where. We have basil. and oregano. And these seeds are really tiny, so they're going to come out fast if you choose to plant oregano. So one thing that you'll want to check is your soil moisture. If your soil is kind of dry, um, then you'll want to add a little bit more water. But if you're getting soil out of your garden, let's say, um, and it's, it's pretty moist because there was a rain, then you probably don't need to add extra water. Um, if you're taking mud from a pond and putting it in here, that's probably going to be pretty wet too, and you won't need to add any water. This is a little bit dry, so we'll add some water just to make sure we get that germination process going. And in your journal, these are the types of things you'll want to keep track of. So I'm just sort of pouring the water in, but you'll, you'll, you would probably want to um, write the exact amount of water that you're putting in to keep some good results. All right, the next step is to take our top, put our cap on, and then place it within the inside of our two liter bottle. Now be careful for the sides, they can be a little bit sharp um, depending on how you cut. And you're ready to place your herb garden, in this case, um, next to a window. In about three to four weeks, you'll notice that your herb garden has really taken off. This here is mint. 
And um, as scientists, we like to engage all five of our senses, so we're going to use our sense of smell. Definitely smells like toothpaste, so what you could do is you could take a little piece off of here, wash it, and put it in some tea. Um, and when all, all of your other seedlings start to grow, you can, you can take them out, chop them up, put them on a pizza, put them in some soup. So that was for our herb garden, but this one is from our garden in a glove experiment. So we have some green beans here that we took and we, we moved them from our, our glove into this fertile soil and we're gonna keep an eye on these and see how they grow. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about ecosystems. And ecosystems are a little bit difficult to define because they can be as small as a puddle of rain or as big as a continent. So let's talk a little bit more about it. So we have four different levels, an ecosystem, community, population, and then individual. Here at the ecosystem level, we're gonna be talking about this pollinator garden, how a group of living and non-living things interact with one another. Living things meaning biotic factors and non-living things being abiotic factors. So we have some abiotic factors like the sun, the wind, the rain, a gardener shovel, a glove, and some biotic factors or living things like the microbes in the soil, the plants themselves, or the pollinators like butterflies and bees who have flown in. And then if we go down to the community level, this is how, how do all these living things um, interact with each other in the same place? So how do the bees and the flowers and the butterflies all interact at the community level? Then we go, we zoom down even more to the population level. So how do these bees interact with other bees? And then all the way down to an individual. So how does that one bee interact with its entire ecosystem as a whole? So. If we were to plant a pollinator garden and all of these great pollinators come in and the bees are able to pollinate the other fruits and vegetables, this benefits the gardener because now they will produce more fruits and vegetables with great pollination. Um, if we think about how we interact in our own ecosystem, um, we can think about uh, our neighborhoods. So let's, let's talk about that. So here's our ecosystem of our neighborhood. We have our houses, we have the school, a playground, and we can talk about the different abiotic and biotic factors at this ecosystem level. So the abiotic factors, meaning the buildings or the sun or the wind or the rain or the playground and the um, biotic factors or the living things like the trees, the flowers, the plants and the people living there. Then if we want to talk about the community, we would talk about, all right, how do all these living things within that one cul-de-sac or court interact with each other? How do the families interact with each other? And then we go down to the population or the family. So how do each of these family members interact with each other? And then we go down to you, the individual. How do you affect your ecosystem as a whole? So an example of that would be like, if you won the science fair project at your school, and then you went home and told your family and your family celebrated and you went out for a pizza and ice cream and then all your brothers and sisters then were able to get pizza and ice cream. They benefit from that. And then the school publishes a, uh, a news article and then the whole community hears about your great efforts in winning the science fair project. Then your whole ecosystem was affected by your one, um, by your one action. Um, so that is how ecosystems are all connected together. So one example of changing the variables in your, in your ecosystem in a bottle is maybe you plant the seeds close together and you see how they compete with each other. Is one gonna rise above the other and outshade it and take all of its nutrients? Or maybe you plant seeds in there and then you take a dandelion and you blow it in there. So you don't really wanna grow dandelions, so in that case it's now a weed. How is that weed going to affect the plants that you actually wanna grow? At Monsanto, finding a variety of solutions for farmers is important. This is why we test things in a lot of different ways, such as in greenhouses and fields across the world. We work together with other experts to find the best solutions for farmers to choose from, so that their ecosystem, their farm, is sustainable for generations to come. Thank you for tuning in to Ecosystem in a Bottle. I encourage you to think about the ecosystem that you live in. I hope you enjoyed Science Camp, and see you next time.